Right, guys, I'm just looking through some of your quiz form answers, and I think it's probably worth me just quickly going over a couple of things. I'm a bit worried about um, if you're understanding things well, okay? So I'm just going to write some of the key points down that we've done so far, because this topic will get quite tricky in the next section. So we want to make sure that we understand it quite well first. So in that last bit there, we were looking at this thing called combustion, okay? And combustion basically means that we're going to burn a fuel, and a fuel is usually something called a hydrocarbon, okay? And what that means is this is a molecule that contains hydrogen and carbon, and that will become a little bit more clear as we go through this topic. Okay, and we burn the fuel in oxygen because as we learned in the, when we looked at the fire triangle, we need three things to allow something to burn. We need a fuel, we need oxygen. Hopefully in your heads, you're thinking of what the last one is. We need some heat, okay? So combustion is the burning of a fuel which is usually a hydrocarbon, so a molecule made up of hydrogen atoms and carbon atoms in oxygen. Okay. Now, if there is lots of oxygen, so loads and loads of, we'll just write O2, so that's the chemical symbol for a molecule of oxygen, we will have what is called complete combustion. Because there's plenty of oxygen for that reaction to happen. Okay, so think about the blue flame of our Bunsen burner and when we've really opened up the air hole and it's allowing loads of oxygen through, it combines and reacts with the methane gas that's coming through the gas pipe and it produces that blue flame, okay, complete combustion. And when that happens, what we have is if we can write down just write it like this so that I've got plenty of space. We have our hydrocarbon, we combine it with the oxygen that comes in through the air hole and we produce two things. We produce carbon dioxide and we produce water. Okay? However, if we don't have enough oxygen, we complete something called incomplete combustion. Now remember, if we go back to the fire triangle, this is always about adding in oxygen, okay? So incomplete combustion is when we now have limited oxygen. So imagine now we're talking about the yellow flame on the Bunsen, okay? So as an example. So here, we again, we're burning a fuel, which is going to be a hydrocarbon, a molecule made up of carbon and hydrogen atoms and we are going to have a limited supply of oxygen and when that happens we don't completely break down this molecule to form carbon dioxide and water we produce different molecules so we produce what is called carbon monoxide and we produce carbon as a solid and that's sometimes why the bottom of our beaker when it's sat on top of a tripod will end up getting black stuff all accumulating around the bottom of it because we're producing actual carbon as an end product and you also get some water okay so that's the difference between complete combustion when we've got lots of oxygen present, so we've got hydrocarbon plus oxygen producing carbon dioxide and water, and incomplete combustion, where in a limited supply of oxygen, we will break down the hydrocarbon to carbon monoxide. Now, the problem with this is that this molecule here is poisonous, and that's why many of us will have carbon monoxide detectors in our house. I think we all should have those if. We all have to have them if we've got a boiler. Plus carbon, 
which is the solid black stuff that we can see on the bottom of a beaker if we use the yellow flame, plus water. Right, guys, um, this next um, bit is just to go over homework three, which you also did this week. So when you're looking at this, first thing is what is a hydrocarbon? OK, so what we need to know, we sort of talked about this in the first one as well. So a hydrocarbon, we should know, is a molecule that is made up of hydrogen and carbon. OK, the next question that was in your homework is talking about an experiment that we will do when we're back in school. So I don't particularly want to go over this just now because I don't want you to have all the answers before we go back. So I'm going to miss that one out. So if you didn't get this answer, that's OK, because we removed it anyway when we were doing our notes. When a candle burns, black smoke and soot are formed. Why is that? So remember, when we talked previously, we talked about this process called incomplete combustion. And when that happens, we take a hydrocarbon as a fuel, okay, and we burn it in, we burn it with a reactor with limited oxygen. And if that oxygen supply is limited, then we don't fully break it down to carbon dioxide and water. We produce carbon monoxide, which we said was poisonous. We produce carbon, a solid, and we produce water. OK, so why do we get black smoke and soot when a candle burns? Because it's burned in limited oxygen. We've got incomplete combustion. OK. Here we've got a pie chart and you've, this is a little bit like your investigative skills. So if you haven't got this right, go back and practice using this. In a pie chart, everything will add up to 100%. Okay? So the first question says, what evidence is there that incomplete combustion of petrol has taken place? So this shows all the gases that are going to be found if you sample the fumes coming out of the back of a car. This is how do you know it's incomplete combustion of that petrol fuel? So a whole bunch of stuff here, but also carbon monoxide. Now that's a big giveaway because as we've said over here, carbon monoxide is something that you would find if it was incomplete combustion. OK, so the, the evidence that there's incomplete combustion is that carbon monoxide was found in those fumes. OK. Right, next question. Use the information, work out the percentage of those fumes that contained carbon monoxide. Now, the way that you do this is say that all of the fumes should add up to 100%. So you're going to take away the 71, that was nitrogen, the 3% nitrogen oxides, 4% of oxygen, 8% of carbon dioxide, 9% that was water vapour, and you should be left with 5. So that 5% must be the only part of the pie chart that doesn't have a value, which is carbon monoxide. OK, so your answer there should be 5%. OK, the next one. When a fuel burns, all the reactant atoms are rearranged to form something else. However, conservation of mass tells us that nothing is lost or gained. So we've got to work out the mass of the water formed. OK, so the way that we would write this out is we would say that we have methane is reacting with oxygen. We have 16 grams of methane and we've got 64 grams of oxygen. And the sum total of that is 80 grams. Now, conservation of mass tells us that if 80 grams went into the reaction, 80 grams should come out. We're told that 44 grams of that is carbon dioxide. So the rest of that 80 grams has to be water. So that means that the answer to that question is 36. OK, the next question requires a little bit more work. 
So here it says, I'm just going to make it a wee bit bigger. We've got protein, propane, the fuel, hydrocarbon, 36 grams, reacting with oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water. And we've got to fill in all of these missing values. Okay. So again, we'll go propane. reacting with oxygen and we've got to work out how many grams that was but we're told that the total mass is 156 grams 36 grams of that's propane propane and therefore 120 grams of that must be oxygen so that's your first missing value so these are what you would call the reactants okay so we always write those on the left hand side and they are going to form products. And in this reaction, again, because this is a hydrocarbon reacting with oxygen, we are going to form carbon dioxide and water. If that was complete combustion, because there's plentiful oxygen there, we're going to get 42 grams of carbon dioxide. And because this is 156 grams of reactants, we will get 156 grams of product. So here we're going to do 156 take away 42 and that is going to give us 114 grams of water okay so that is our second value and also this one is missing too okay so hopefully that helps make sense of some of those questions that you weren't sure of okay